Less than 14 hours, Hurricane Milton will make landfall on the western coast of Florida. Winds will be fierce at well over 100 miles per hour, with storm surges reaching up to 15 feet and up to 18 inches of rain. It's looking like the storm of the century. I'm here with leaders of my administration who are in the front lines preparing for this storm and will brief me in our latest efforts. To save lives and livelihoods, I want to emphasize a few things. First, many communities in Hurricane Milton's path do not have a moment to catch their breath between Helene and Milton. Two historic storm storms in two weeks. I want to thank everyone who has followed local guidance to evacuate ahead of the landfall. I know it's really tough leaving behind your home, your belongings, everything you own, but I urge everyone and Hurricane Milton's path to follow all safety instructions as we head to the next 24 hours. It's a matter of, literally, a matter of life and death. Second, for the last week, my team has done everything possible to prepare for this storm. I immediately approved emergency declarations in Florida and the Seminole Tribe in Florida. I also served search and rescue teams, water, food, power generators, ambulances to the region. In my direction, Administrator Criswell will be in the State Emergency Operations Center in Florida tonight. And Kamala and I are going to keep pressure on the company so prices stay stable on gasoline, flights, and goods people need. Finally, we're teaming up with state and local officials to support impacted communities. I spoke with the Florida Governor DeSantis, with Mayor Tampa Castor, Mayor, the, the Tampa Mayor, the Clearwater Mayor, Rector. And, uh, and the Pinellas County Chairwoman, Peters. I offer them everything we need, everything we have, everything they need. And I made it clear to them they should reach out if there's anything more they need. I gave them my personal phone number here at the White House to contact me directly if that's necessary. Let me close with this. I want to thank the governors of all the affected areas over the last couple of weeks. Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, Virginia. You know, uh, We've been in constant contact, and they've been very thankful and appreciative of the help the federal government is providing, and I'm appreciative of all they're doing as well. And I've told them to contact me with anything else they need. We have made available an unprecedented number of assets to deal with this crisis. We're going to continue to do so until the job is done. But now I want to be clear about something. For the last few weeks, there's been a reckless, irresponsible, and relentless promotion of disinformation and outright lies that are disturbing people. It's undermining confidence in the incredible rescue and recovery work that has already been taken and that will continue to be taken. And it's harmful to those who need help the most. There is simply no place for this to happen. Former President Trump has led the onslaught of lies. Assertions have been made that property is being confiscated. That's simply not true. They're saying people impacted by these storms will receive $750 in cash and no more. That's simply not true. They're saying in the money is needed to, for, the, in the, for this crisis is being diverted to migrants. What a ridiculous thing to say. It's not true. Now the claims are getting even more bizarre. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, a congresswoman from Georgia, is now saying the federal government is literally controlling the weather. We're controlling the weather. It's beyond ridiculous. It's got to stop. In moments like this, there are no red or blue states. There's one United States of America where neighbors are helping neighbors. Volunteers and first responders are risking everything, including their own lives, to help their fellow Americans. State, local, and federal officials are standing side by side. Let me repeat, no one should make the American people question whether their governments will be making sure that this is acting on strikes. They'll be there. We will, all of us. I'm going to turn it over to Vice President Harris, if that's okay with all of you. Thank you.